Welcome back to the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. I'm Inquisitor Temperance Price, Keeper of the Inquisition's Black Library, and this is the third volume in a report on the Valentine Heresy, an actual play podcast set in the Genesis adaptation of Warhammer 40,000's Dark Heresy RPG. This report features Game Master Tom McGee and players Ryan LaPlante as Inquisitor Lucius Valentine, Tyler Hewitt as Atticus Viz, Laura Hamstra as Eli Sharp, and Della Borovic as Morgan Rawls. My report shows that Lord Kiros has been shot while Atticus aimed at him. Valentine discovered the chief suspect's rendezvous and was forced to race to the location solo. Morgan ambushed the Voidstain heir. Eli broke another gun. And Atticus faced off with Lord Kiros. What will happen now that another heir has been shot and Atticus is likely to be blamed? Find out next in this episode of the Valentine Heresy. From the Lizardman Letter. One must assume that in the day before the hunt, all manner of preparation are going. After all, it wouldn't do to not shoot straight when one is needed to. Hmm. Kiros gets shot. Uh, a bullet bursts out of his... Uh, uh, he's looking back at you, so comes through his back, bursts out of his uh, his chest. You see him at distance, just like a blast of, of red and gore as he screams and, and staggers forward. Uh, still not wearing any pants, which really un- adds an unfortunate dimension to this whole thing. Atticus, what do you do? Run. Run towards him. Okay. And I'm also into the earpiece. Um, uh, 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 everyone, Kiros has been shot. Red alert. You lied, you assume that he did it. Uh, I don't know, but given the <clears throat> non-committal language, Eli, who is going to the Imperial Guards already, mm-hmm. will alert them just to like play the role that Atticus is clearly setting out here, that he's been shot. So Great. Imperial Guards should be notified immediately, otherwise it'll be suspicious. Cool. All right. Excellent. Um... Meanwhile, uh, before the gunshot goes off, uh, Voidstain has been left with um, Morgan. Uh, so we, we flash back to moments moments earlier okay. um, where uh, Trembling, holding his blade, he said, uh, you'd asked him uh, if he had something to say to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he says, yes, in fact, I do. Die, heretic. Uh, and with a twist, <gasps> he pulls a knife from the cane and attempts to stab you through the chest. So what is your defense? I believe it's zero because you're wearing mm-hmm. normal clothes. It is. Um, so this is a melee check. So it's two purple uh, for the difficulty. Um, I'm going to give him a setback for having to uh, twist the cane out. Um, he has those stats. So like what a fucking amateur. Die heretic. The stabber. God, I hate people. <laughs> They're not good at it. He's never had an adventure. I know. Um, <laughs> just like, these people could be so much more successful. Yep. And see, he looks at Morgan and thinks she's unarmed, which is accurate, but she's not unburdened. That's, that's exactly, yeah. No. No. So I'm going to spend a story point to upgrade my dice. Uh, for those of you watching and listening at home, uh, we are using tons of dice rollers. So if you ever see us just looking down in general confusion and consternation, that's usually why. Um, okay. You say you just used story point? We're at two and I three. did. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Morgan, did you want to spend anything on this? No. that's It's going to play out the way it does. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> that is uh, one failure which I think is probably appropriate for this whole situation. So he kind of stumbles forward uh, with this dagger out and mm-hmm. is literally trying to like fall forward into you mm-hmm. uh, and drive it into your chest. What yeah, do you do? She would just sidestep, put hands no. on his back and let him run into <laughs> further into the maze. Into oh, the wall. no. Uh, so he stumbles <laughs> stumbles into the maze. That's the worst, yeah. the worst outcome for him. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. What do you do next? That is quite an accusation, and to pull arms on someone in this situation is... Why would you do such a thing? I am doing my duty for the Imperium. And he turns and kind of like uh, brings up the dagger, but in like a a very classical fencing pose where he's got like the counter arm out. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it really, on, on this little, little sort of stubby man, really doesn't... There's no elegance to this, but it's just how he's been trained. So he's got kind of you at a dagger point. 
uh, at distance, obviously, you're not danger close or anything. But he just says, yeah, I saw the heretical markings on your back, and it's my job as a citizen of the Imperium to stop you. The markings <laughs> on my back are an Imperial Aquila. What is heretical about that in your estimation? The other things that were there, too. What things? There were markings that echoed in my very brain. Oh, were they? Yes, I believe of one of the many ones we cannot name, but it rhymes with Milish, so... <laughs> what? <laughs> How would someone in your standing such as you know things about that? Sometimes when one's family commits an awful lot of heresy, you learn a lot about heresy to make sure you can stomp it out so you are above suspicion. Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> It seems that you do a lot of research about such things. It sounds like you are a man of the people. People speak so highly of you in the lower circles. No, no, they don't even speak highly of me there. You won't trick me with your your spooky ways. Listen, you won't get it. You won't get what she had. And I'll fight you to the death before I'll let you, you, you get, get, get whatever nefarious chaos nonsense you're after. The enemy will not have success on this planet, even if I die in the attempt. Lady Ballensong did discuss with me that she saw you watching her often. Is that another part of you protecting this planet? I'm not telling you shit, heretic. Have at you. And he just kind of takes a couple little lunges towards you, but again, it's a very short dagger and he's a very short man, so they're little stutter steps. Um, do you want to try... Let's let's go for a dice roll if you want to get some, some information out of I would love to get something out of this guy besides this silliness. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the visual image I have in my head is from Star Trek Next Generation when of like miniature Riker in the holodeck and like Barkley's imagine like his I don't remember version. that but that's probably he just correct. has like Riker's really short yeah, he and is like on guard <laughs> he made a shorter Riker he could bully basically yeah. in a program <laughs> and he always has a sword he's like am I late <laughs> <laughs> that's very good that's what I'm yeah, picturing you're not, you're not wrong that's, 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 <laughs> it's droopy dog versus Morgan Rawls yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. This, this is where we're at I love tale as old as time um what, uh, how would you like to try and get information out of, out of, uh, Sacreter Void Stain? I, I think it's just, I would try to be deception and be like, you saw right, but you are foolish because I am on your side. Bold play. <laughs> uh, okay. So go deception. Um, I'm going to say difficulty of four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because someone That's fair. who is a secret heretic being like, I'm not a secret heretic, I'm your friend, is something a heretic would 100% say. That's fair. Um, you can get a boost for not lying. <laughs> like, you are kind of on his side. Um, in as <laughs> much as even, even Dell disagrees with that. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, well, you I was going to say, in as much as he seems to be anti-chaos, you are anti-chaos. So, like, you are... What what I'm saying is not true, but it, it, yeah. underneath it, yeah. technically. You're able to to steal yeah. it with kind of like, <laughs> I am not a fucking heretic, shut up. Yes. Which which brings true in yeah. your in your uh deception. <laughs> um I think that's about it from me. Um I'll I will give you a setback for the having seen the scar. <laughs> for having had heretical tattoos. Yeah. You would, you did have the symbols on you. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I do know who Slanash is. Okay, <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. no one's saying those words. <laughs> you could be listening. Um, I, could I get another boost for my deception concealing information? Sure. Yeah. It's a stretch, it's but I'll part of my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess this is what it is. Would you like to spend a story point? I don't think I can. I, there's other things. This is just what it is, Tom. <laughs> Tom! <laughs> because right now, this is the lowest stakes conflict. <laughs> Look, if you just don't move and don't in any way defend yourself, he might injure you eventually. So, like, then you might legally be able to murder him. <laughs> I know. That's... Yeah, to Toby records video, not audio, Tom. So well, Toby just sorry. sees an old just man trying to kill Dell. send him to do a prank, and he'll die in the backyard. This is true. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll. Atticus's next prank. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Holy Christ. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes and four threats. 
Jesus Whatever the fuck Christ. that means. <laughs> Look at it. What is that? <laughs> he believes you, but now he's also in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. No woman Holy as beautiful God. as you could be a heretic. <laughs> I talked oh, to this guy hasn't learned friend. anything. <laughs> Beauty and heresy can't go hand in hand. That's impossible. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you mean Horace was pretty? Um, okay, I don't so. I know what that was. <laughs> how, many, how many threat, Del? Four. Four threat. Eight success, four threat. <laughs> Never okay. even seen a roll that high. All right. I'm going to boot some of that threat down the road to a different thing. Um, okay. Oh, what? So he, what? yeah, yeah, Tyler's got it with his thumbs. Stop. You've got story points. <laughs> Everybody's Ryan's got doing. story points. This Tyler guy pointed at himself. Having a good time. Oh, no, Ryan's, Ryan's like, no, pointing thing. at himself. We'll see. Uh-huh. <laughs> we we know that this story ends with me saying shots fired. Now we in know her Tom ear. Love saying cut to. We don't know who's fucked yet. <laughs> <laughs> Eli opens the door. There's just like a blood letter. It's like, oh no. <laughs> that would make us all so much more comfortable. Uh, Honestly, yeah. Eli would be like, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Something I know. <laughs> um all right. So um he he softens a bit and lowers the 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 tip of his his dagger and uh, he says, "You are, aren't you? I believe you. Many successes." <laughs> um, says my family fell to to corruption and it would seem that perhaps you have also been a victim of the forces of the enemy exerting their influence on things. I am still very confused about why you have the symbol of rhymes with Manish on your back, but yeah, I suppose you you have your reasons same same as I do. Yes, exactly. So you're here to stop <laughs> you know what's happening here? Yes, I'm here to find out more information about what is happening, and if you help me, I can help save this planet. Oh, that would be very good. I'm very concerned that so many people seem to just be overlooking everything that's been going on. Apparently, not everyone has been looking, and some people have been hiding. So tell me what you know. Is this part of your celestial season bid? There are greater things at work here. Oh, good. I'm glad someone else understands. Uh, <laughs> Lady Bong Song has inherited a lot of her family's uh, holdings, and amongst those holdings I fear is something quite dark. I've been trying to put together the pieces, but I admit it has been very difficult from the outside and with limited resources and social reach. But I fear that deep beneath the manor there may be something rather unpleasant. What do you think that thing might be? Well, you may know that this planet was previously entirely heretical and all chaos tinged in things, and then it was nuked from orbit, as is correct in the light of the Holy Emperor's will and wrath. As the Emperor wills it. Yeah, he willed it real good into the ground, but, uh... (laughs) Even the the Emperor's far reach has limits, and I I fear that some of what was here may still be here beneath certain buildings. Have you heard of this this supposed ghost? I have heard talk of that ghost. I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in spooky chaos monsters. (laughs) I agree with you. Well... Look, you've probably noticed with the seasons changing that there is some technology here that I'm pretty sure is not, uh, you know, cool with the Adeptus Mechanicus. Have you heard of this kind of nonsense anywhere else in your travels? I don't think so. (laughs) I would say seasons changing, that sort of thing. In a flying castle? No, not not your usual fare. It does seem rather extravagant for its uses. And how does some random king on a small planet have it? It's just there's some very concerning things, and no one is fucking talking about them. So, what I think might be happening is that maybe our beloved king may have started to find some ways to use some stuff that maybe he shouldn't have access to in order to make all this magical hullabaloo happen. And I fear that the source is, is beneath the Balansong Manor, right there. And he like, points his little dagger at the house. Oh, I that, love this guy. <laughs> that very well might be true. I have another question for you. While I check my notes. 
Where did, where did, where did his this name go? This is strong, like, in a video game cutscene, just, like, opening the menu and <laughs> checking it. You're hitting yeah. pause and checking the checking journal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, all the letters I've received. <laughs> yes, perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Do you happen to know Herrera, a ship's mechanic from Lady Bolensong's cr- crew? Who? That's what I thought. All right. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't know many people from the big houses. They don't invite me over very often. I have stood nearby a few uh, larger occasions trying to insert myself in uh, to the society a bit, but no one really trusts the Void Stains, and nor should they. The impact of chaos is far-reaching and should never be forgotten. <sighs> but no, I, 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 I've never met any, any Herrera of, of, of any sort. Uh, should I have? No. I just needed to check on that. Uh, do you want to roll perception to see if he is lying? Yeah, I would love that. Oh, man. So uh, I'll say difficulty two. You've got a pretty good read on this guy at this point. Okie dokie. Um, Anything else? I will give you one setback from your previous oh, my, my. amount of threat, which is it's just kind of hard. Uh, you were fo- so focused on your lies that... Uh, it was the kind of thing where, like, you pushed a door and the door didn't give, so you mm-hmm. threw all your weight behind it. So now you're, like, in, but you didn't spend your normal time casing this guy. Totally. So it's a little harder yeah, to yeah. Read. We're in a different situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I think that's it. Okay. I'm going to just roll it. Yep. Three successes, one triumph, one threat. Oh. I've got to read on oh. this guy. He reminds me of someone I've seen in a bar a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he says is dangerous, but also true. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't know what we should do about that triumph. Pass it forward, <laughs> along with that threat. <laughs> um, I think I'll say, Del, once he answers, or once you get your read on this, mm-hmm. um, the triumph will give you, he will just answer, like, a question completely honestly that you have. Um, but he he's not lying. You get okay. the sense that he's legitimately... Honestly, li- like, I didn't have anything else for this guy. Mm-hmm. If anything, I feel like I want to pass the triumph on to... Toby from up ahead still scouting stuff up. Okay. Yeah, I'd buy that. that. Yeah, buy, yeah, I'd allow that. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, him, her hearing that and hearing that that's true and getting more information from this guy, and I also am feeling like he's not a flight risk now. He came here to try to talk to the Lord while that stuff checks out, and she just, if you promise not to try to stab me again, I will escort you out of the maze. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I just thought you were a servant of the Dark Ones. Uh, and he, like, stuffs the sword back in the cane and says, Thank you for not squarely thrashing me when I failed to kill you. I suspect you could very easily have dispatched me. I'm not a particularly skilled combatant. I prefer horses. You seem like you are very good with horses. Would you like to talk about that? <laughs> like, just making conversation yeah. with the guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, kind of taken aback, and he's like, well, I don't really know how to put the connection one can have with a horse into words. And, like, the two of you start to, Perfect. like, fuck off at just... it. Um, the triumph that I'll say is when the uh, the gunshot goes off, um, Toby can uh, zero in on the location. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yep. great. So, gunshot goes off, words go around, uh, Atticus, uh, you are rushing towards um, uh, Kuros, um, there is a second shot uh, that blasts a chunk of uh, grass off, like next to his head. Um, and uh, what, are you shooting? Are you doing anything? What What else is is afoot for you? Can I tell where the shots are coming from? Uh, they're coming out of the woods. Can I tell more specifically where they're coming from so that I can position myself between the stationary Kuros and the shooter? I think he's small enough that if you just are close to him and on the other side of him, that you will be in the way of of shots. So yes. That's not good enough. I, uh, uh, when I watched him get shot, mm-hmm. how bad was the wound? Um, from distance, you couldn't really tell because literally he was just like turned around, was talking to you. And then there's just a puff of like red viscera and he, he fell forward. Okay. As uh, I'm running. Yeah. As you approach, uh, do you want to roll me a, a Medicaid check, please? Intellect. Hoo-hoo. First mm-hmm. time rolling intellect, I would probably say for Atticus. Yeah, Got to keep it interesting, man. What's the difficulty, sir? Um, difficulty of one. You've seen battlefield injuries enough. Uh, it's just, it's not really like you can just observe what the injury is. This is more a matter of like how dire is this? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a boost for combat. Having seen a lot of combat. Uh, he, I'll give you a setback for being under fire. 
I have rolled <laughs> so many times. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, the first roll with my abilities and the difficulty was a wash. Mm -hmm. The boost you gave me, I added that, rolled that, thinking that was it. That gave me two advantages. Mm -hmm. The, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, what's it called? Liability setback. dice. Setback dice, thank you. Uh, uh, that rolled as a wash. So, a net <laughs> of two advantages. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Great. Um, best of three, I guess. Um... <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you um, you can't quite tell. He's unfortunately writhing um, around, which makes it very difficult to like see things as you run past. He's alive. He is currently alive, yes. Um, but you didn't get from the dice, though. You just saw it. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Crossed my arms petulantly for those of you listening. <laughs> Going from ships crashing to people full on getting shot. It seems pretty clear to me that... Atticus, it seems pretty clear to Atticus that Kuros doesn't really seem to know anything. Um, or at least he didn't seem like he was willing to share any secrets. It was more like talking about building alliances, talking about trying to get me to turn on other competitors and stuff like that. I think it's more important to find this shooter. So as I'm running uh, up to him, seeing that uh, he's still alive, uh, that he wasn't you know, just turned into pink mist and just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just two legs standing <laughs> afterwards or anything like that. Um, I'm uh, running into the forest. Um, I saw the explosion of earth near his head. So someone's trying to finish the job. So I am running and firing into the forest nice. to try and basically uh, 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 reduce someone's accuracy. Uh, I'm also furiously looking for them. I am naked and I am sprinting into the goddamn woods. Um, uh, and all over the radio, I, I will say, uh, 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 active shooter in the woods. Can I tell what uh, direction, like north, south? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'd say it's probably north of the estate. Yep. Uh, active shooter uh, in the woods north of the estate. Kuros is down, but not dead. Uh, he's taking fire. You got strong Brock Samson energy right now. I'm just saying, like, right oh, yeah. into the woods, firing a guy yeah. <laughs> wildly. Yeah. I was uh, saying, before we go further, Tom, I have a pitch for the two advantage that Tyler had, if you're up for it. Sure. <laughs> he had a servo skull that he had in position filming pantsless Kiros. Yes. He booked it, passed it, and ran. So can we spend those advantage to just have the servo skull have kept rolling where it was positioned? Yes. Dope. Uh, also, feel free to spend story points for shit like that if you need it. I think in this case, the advantage makes sense, but yeah. I'm also happy to take, cool. like... I'm trying to, I, as you've probably seen, I'm moving advantage and uh, disadvantage toward often passing dice around, mm -hmm. but don't be afraid to make pitches for like mm -hmm. story okay. utility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this was one where I was like, logically that would be happening anyways, but we can spend this to solidify it because I think it is worth it having on tape of Kiros yeah. getting shot, the blood goes towards that and Atticus going to help is yeah, <laughs> shooting valuable. into the forest. <laughs> yeah, <fun>. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just the world's worst like... There's a lot of ass out running, but yeah. like it's still heroic. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. That's Graybridge's ass. <laughs> Graybridge's ass. <laughs> I mean, it can't be the episode title, but could it? Um, <laughs> uh, Toby, you are yes. um, Morgan. I should say you have Toby in the air. Yeah. So I think that her demeanor changes completely because she's trying to just schmooze with this guy yep. to keep him in good. And then as soon as all of those calls and everything comes through, her demeanor changes, and. She's like, take two lefts and a right. And then she turns back and goes back towards what's going on, but sends Toby first to try to go north looking for what they're talking sure. about. So with the triumph, I'm going to say Toby can triangulate it. Yep. Like basically in terms of just like being above ground searching, mm -hmm. saw the like the first shot, saw the second shot. And I think to having robot eyes, like honestly, Valentine would probably have the same luck where it's just a lot easier to track. Mm hmm. Uh, gunfire, even though it is munition, not not Laz. Um, okay, so uh, do you want Toby to try and like catch the shooter, or just keep an eye on on things? Well, if I could see that Atticus is also running towards that, I think I want to get eyes on what or who is there and try and relay information to Atticus while also on foot trying to run and meet all of them back there. Okay, um, so using Toby to get information. I think we'll play that as probably giving Atticus an advantage going into the woods. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, uh, Morgan, you're sprinting after, yeah. uh, sprinting towards the action. Because I think, like, in, in a pinch, Toby could help take down Assailant, but I think 
being able to see things and not being like on this person is is more useful to Morgan mm -hmm. out of the gate. Okay. Say over the radio, because there was a broadcast to mm -hmm. the internal team, you would just hear Valentine's voice come and just say, I'm not on site and I'm unavailable. We don't need to go into that. Lord Van Houten has command. As you all know, and as he would undoubtedly wish, keep the other heirs and Lord Van Houten alive as priority. Then either take this assassin alive or kill them if you must. Acknowledged. <laughs> And he's out and gone. Like, he's not in the channel anymore. Oh, Great. no. <laughs> I wanted to get him information, but if he already turned it off, then... I mean, you could send Valentine more, Valentine has exited the chat. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. send more, but he's not blasting. Also, you can DM him outside of the group chat uh, here. Then I think that, that <laughs> as Morgan is, is running towards the rest of the group, uh, <sighs> Sir, your plan that you were working on, Void thing is not part of I don't know what or who sends that. That's it. Excellent. They're much more likely to kill me. Uh, is <laughs> Void staying with you? Uh, <laughs> I he was. Go find him and keep him alive, please. Morgan <sighs> stops and turns around and goes back into that maze with that man. And you you have Toby, but you're not going to have Morgan. That's fine. Great. <laughs> um, and Eli, I assume you, as soon as the, the shots are fired, you're you're sprinting over to to assist with stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, notified the Imperial Guard because yep. it was like right there, and then it's back to where the action's happening. Great. So we've got sort of Eli rushing to around to where the shooting gallery mm -hmm. was, uh, Atticus running to the woods, Morgan uh, running into the maze, and the Royal Guard have been alerted and are like presumably like ushering the servants back inside the mansion, mm -hmm. just being like, get the fuck out of here, get the fuck out of here. Um, and like... Um, presumably. Uh, <laughs> I, I to avoid presumption, uh, uh, would... Um, Atticus, through the uh, microbead, be able to uh, speak on a more open channel, like a sure. uh, uh, balance song wide kind of channel? Or I don't know that you guys would be... Um, I guess we could probably... Uh, I'll give it to you for a story point. I'll take it. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, we'll say that the, the solicitor um, hooked you up with um, sort of the... the a statewide channel, assuming you'd use it like a Vox for it, but since you have micro beads, you can yeah. just kind of like click just it. like a to put it on the record when when this is all being investigated later, and b right. to hopefully actually have this done in time to save someone's life. He's just barking, uh, 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 uh Venkaria, uh, Venkaria Kuros in need of medical attention now at the north end of the property. Just right. everyone knows he needs medical attention. Cool. So, like the balance song, uh, uh, sort of Medicaid, and like the uh, a couple of the the uh, royal guard who were trained in uh, first aid are like rushing in with armed guards on either side. Like they've got people kind of flanking them um, as they uh, they run for that. Uh, cool. Okay. So all that is going on. Meanwhile, Valentine, you are en route to uh, the coordinates. Yep. He is in a uniform for the mechanics who worked on the ships that it would be identical to his target. He's also taken a hat, just one of those kind of flat brimmed caps, knowing that we've used Star Wars references for this before. But that kind of imperial yep. mech hat with the flat visor, uh, just to make sure he has something covering his eyes and his scars. He didn't really get to know what this guy looks like. He didn't have much of a face when he was dead, but he's just got to play the physicality and the uniform. The only weapon he could get is he's got a, a, like a the equivalent of a steak knife from the kitchen, just a large, like a longer blade, something comparable to the kind he would clip onto a bayonet or take out. Sure. It's tucked into his belt, and then his secret weapon is just his mechanical hand. If he's going to put a thumb through an eye and you've got a bionic hand that hmm. can do it, it's a nice little back pocket thing. His only plan is to get there. His only prayer is that Forrest Pollard fucking shows up because now if he knows it's not void stain it means he's going into this thing in the hopes of being able to sneak up on whoever is going to be trying to sneak up on him he's gonna have to park a ways away and make his way to the coordinates but this is straight up cloak and dagger assassin on assassin shit because brandon dumb so brandon gonna get murdered now he brandon <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind um would you be you're not just gonna walk up to the coordinates you're going to stealth up to the coordinates He's got to he's got to do a blend between the two. He needs to park a ways away because uh, theoretically Brandon would have stolen whatever. So Brandon odds of him driving it right up are pretty fucking low. But he can't in interact. He can't fake being this guy. There's no way to do that. Uh, it, do these carriages have like a gas pedal? Is it possible to just like put a brick down and let the carriage roll? Into yeah, one hundred percent. These are meant to be driven by either like servants or rich people who don't really know how to drive. So yes. Great. He would like to stop like like a ways away functionally and just put that brick down and then like 
let it go and wait to see who shows up at the crash if he can give himself like a couple hundred feet. Okay. Or a couple dozen feet or whatever. He doesn't really have a ranged weapon, so he's got to be close-ish. So the coordinates are like in the woods. Ah, um, fuck it. All so right, then he's walking. That's yeah. it. <laughs> but you, can still, you can still crash the car and see if anyone like shows up to finish the job. I'm just, I want to make clear that like, this isn't a meet me on the side of the road situation. This is a meet me in the deep woods. No, I think the the crash only works if he knows they're going to, otherwise they're just going to come check it out and he won't know where they are and they won't know where mm. he is. So strolling in, but rather than taking the direct path, coming in from like the left, playing an angle where he can stealth a little bit, but it'll look like Brandon sneaking as opposed to Valentine going. Okay, interesting. So I think what I need from you then is actually a deception, not a stealth. Okay. Because you're not actively trying to stealth. Correct. I don't like this. I don't like any of this. <laughs> All bad. Okay. Uh, what is the difficulty? I'm going to say difficulty three because you are trying to be stealthy, but also not stealthy. Like, yeah, he's playing it, a It's role. a weird thing where it's like, yeah, it's exactly, exactly. Uh, so difficulty of three. Um, I'm going to give you a setback for the fucking woods. Yeah. Uh, it's a terrible fucking place to be doing this. Correct. Um, I will give you a boost for being paranoid. Mm -hmm. um, that's something Brandon likely wouldn't have been. Um, I think that's probably it. Do you have anything you want to make a case for? Could I have a boost for knowing exactly where I'm going and now knowing that this is an ambush for the approach? Uh, or that, that was always on the table, so I'm fine if it's That's kind not. of the paranoid okay, piece yeah. I was trying to give you. Yeah. No, 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 I'm good with it yeah. then. This makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, and we're sitting at one and four if you want to use a storm. I'm good for now. Let's see what happens. Two successes and six advantage. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, my own time. Hell, yeah. Um, all right. And I ain't passing around shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mike, we'll see. Okay. No, I, I feel like because he's on his own, it's going to be playing out in this scenario because mm -hmm. he'll need all the help he can get. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Um, cool. So creeping through the woods, Valentine, you start to make your way towards uh, the, the coordinates. I imagine your auspex is probably giving you like a locational ping that you've mm -hmm. obviously put on like airplane mode because you don't want to make the loud noises. But yeah. Um, he could plug it into his ear. Zooming in, yeah. Uh, and you're not seeing uh, anything yet, but uh, not seeing anything is ambush code for good ambush. So um, cautiously, uh, you make your way towards the point. Uh, meanwhile, uh, back at the estate, um, the uh, medical crew arrives kind of behind you. Atticus, you reach the tree line before anyone reaches you. Um, would you wait for everyone or would you be going straight? No, I have not stopped running or barking into the comms at this. This has all been a yeah. moment for him. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, let's get, this is going to be an interesting one. I think we'll go with athletics because you're basically like sprinting through the trees. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so let's see how that goes for you. Um, I'm going to say difficulty of three um, because it's not a particularly well kept. Like, there's, it's not like there's a path. This is literally like jumping over trees and things. Um, you get a boost from uh, Toby's oversight. And I'd actually say let's upgrade one of your green to a yellow um, because Del rolled a triumph. And I feel like that's got to be worth more than a boost. <laughs> okay. One boost for a triumph. Um, Void stain narrates it for some reason. Um, <laughs> Beyond that, I think that's probably it for me. Is there anything you want to make an argument for? Um, this is, um, he is not, he, he is an unstoppable force. That is men his mentality right mm -hmm. now. Uh, he is not stopping at the tree line. He is not stopping until he gets uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, you're looking at the forest as the tree line kind of thing. Once mm -hmm. you get clear of that, you can see the forest generally. He's not even slowing down until he's there to see if he can spot someone, but he is just relentlessly moving through there. I have no, that's the, I'm not saying anything about this to add dice. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you where his head's at. He is like, oh, no. the, uh, uh, he has run up on like, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? Like battle formations lines. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's run up on enemy lines and broken through them. And this is, uh, trees. Yes. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> um, I think maybe what I will say, yeah, I'd give you a boost for that. I think. All right. That, thank that you very much. I'll, I'll take it. It's partially just a like <laughs> the tree branches and shit are hitting you, but it's just a stiff breeze. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Yep. 
Those aren't orcs. No. Yeah. They're orcish flowers. Different kind mm. of vegetation. Um, <laughs> I'm learning with, lore, Lord, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> he brings with him the hum of an engine. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, I'm going to roll. Yep. Okay. One success. And uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight advantage. We like that. Good God. <laughs> Oh my god, he rolled double on almost everything. Today. It's amazing. So much advantage. I don't I don't I don't have stuff for you. Um okay, um so you crash through the trees um and again just as you described, like you're used to breaking battle lines and these are this is just just wood um so just like crashing splintering it literally looks like a cannonball shot through the woods. It's just like sh trees are exploding around you, you smash your way through. Um and uh in the distance, um, you can see a. Well, can you roll me perception? Yeah. Uh, you go got so much advantage. I'm just gonna remember. Yeah, eight, like eight. ten thousand. Eight advantage. advantage. <laughs> Three advantage. Yeah, you can cause uh, someone to drop a melee ranged weapon they're holding. Yeah. So if you want to get that, get that gun. Yeah, sure. If I'm intimidating yeah. enough of just like this person has like a, I don't know what they're doing really, mm -hmm. but. F from just me making assumptions uh, if their perspective is like looking through a scope <laughs> and just trying to finish this fucking douchebag lord off who's l lying and moaning in the lawn and then um, uh, that like uh, viral video of a silverback gorilla <laughs> running through and just like skidding uh, through like the gorilla display like up to the glass kind of thing basically just like busting through the trees trees yep. exploding out as he arrives on the He's scene naked. basically Gets this person just like sh the shock of that makes yeah. them drop their rifle. I will say um, <laughs> the the dropping the rifle I'm totally fine with. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see a person in like a nest aiming. Sure. Uh, they have clearly taken off uh, running uh, uh, before you crash through the tree line. Before I crash through the tree line, they've taken off running. Yep. Can do I have any indication whatsoever of what direction they're going? So in? we're gonna do with the perception check. Okay. But to Ryan's point, we're spending advantage from your like. Advantage all the way down. Oops, all advantage serial um, to have them drop the gun. Okay. Just picturing Wolverine running <laughs> yes, in the woods, but like much Proper shorter. Wolverine. No, like much real Wolverine. Bigger. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Power fist. <laughs> For two advantage, you can add a boost to the next friendly check, which can be your own in this yeah, turn. Yeah, I would so. want the, the yeah. remaining to be boost because I'm not the most perceptive. Totally understand. <laughs> You're also barreling through the trees at full speed. Yeah. <laughs> well, nude. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, two for boost. Uh, it's two to pass one forward to a check that's your own. It's one to pass to an ally. So you, so you two, would, and then I can spend another you have one two. left. So you can just pass that on to whoever's next if you want, or that's I think. Well, or recover no. one strain is an advantage. You had strain. eight. I had eight. Oh, I spent. Fuck I spent three, three for three. yeah. Yeah, so you could drag, give yourself another two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. I've got two two boost, and then plus my regular mm -hmm. roll. Okay, and I'm going to be using those. Sorry, everyone. No, uh, I'll, I'll give you one more. Catch this guy. Yeah, no, or girl, cool. or whoever. I'll give you one more boost from Toby as well. Thanks, Toby. Um, he's not particularly helpful at this range anymore, but just the the ability to kind of like point you in the correct direction was was tremendously helpful. Okay. Yep. Go for it. Uh, I need difficulty. Oh, you sure do. I, you don't need. I, uh, I hesitate to ask, mm, but yeah, what? So you, give me uh, <laughs> difficulty of four. I'm afraid. No. That feels about right. They were in position in advance anyways. No. Makes sense. Find a sniper in the woods? Mm. <laughs> tough. Tough, tough. <laughs> the but sniper. they don't got yeah. no weapon anymore. Uh, and it's one in four in your It's favor. not the gun that makes them sneaky, Laura. Shh. <laughs> well, it depends. If the gun has camo on it, how can you see them? Mm, good question. Realistically, if you just set your PS2 clock ahead a few years, the sniper will just drop. So. Oh, I know who it is then. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, guys. I know who this is. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just a me and Tom thing. And yeah, 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 yeah. We're making a, a Metal Gear Triumvirate joke. Okay, I'm not using the story point. Whoa! I'm not okay. going to do it. All right. This is not an easy roll, but I, it's even-ish. No, two advantage, two failure. All right. Um, so just, again, barreling through, and it's it's just, like, scanning the trees. I think the, to your silverback gorilla, like, barreling through thing, I think part of the problem is that you had a fixed point in your head of kind of like triangulating the location. When you burst through, you were expecting a sniper aiming to finish the job. And finding just a rifle um, is, uh, 
it's not like you stop and like you know fucking LA and wire it and like look at it from <laughs> yeah. all the different angles <laughs> but it's just like coming in being like oh fuck no there isn't then it's the the looking up and scanning as you continue to run um, and you just can't pick up uh, any motion through the trees. Okay, you are right though. I do continue to run. Uh, if I can't, if if I don't know, there is a one millionth of a chance that just picking a direction, I might get him. So I just I run and I keep running. Uh, I, I I say uh, weapon located at my location right now. Proceeding deeper into the woods. Great. Uh, and so you take off deeper into the woods. Um, Eli, you're still outside. You're running, kind of to mm-hmm. catch up. Would you stop to deal with the medical situation or would you be uh, going after Atticus? Uh, uh, yeah, Eli would check on Kiros if if only to assess what type of weapon he's dealing with. Okay. Um, can you roll me perception then? It's, I don't think it's yeah. Medicaid if you're trying to ascertain No, it's weapons. literally be like, what kind of shot was this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's, how yeah. dangerous is the situation? Um, sorry, what did you say? Um, we're going with, uh, perception, please. Okay. Uh, difficulty of two. Yeah. Now that he's being held down by medical professionals, it's, <laughs> it's not the, the writhing and rolling anymore. Yep. Um, I'll give you a boost for the medical professionals being there to assist. Cool. Um, and a disadvantage for trying, or sorry, a setback dice for trying to determine what kind of weapon shot someone when all you can see is the result with yep. no no ballistic forensics? Oh, that's fair. Yeah. It's more like is are we is it an exploding round? Is yeah. it like yeah, yeah. Str- like totally fair? Yeah, more than one shot. Blah blah blah. Rolling. Uh, one success, one threat. Okay. Um, so looking at this, uh, these are uh, similar munitions, honestly, to what you've been looking at all day. Like these these feel like um, sort of like. Smallish caliber, um, okay. like obviously it can be fired from distance, um, but uh, the uh, the wound is is kind of ragged and vicious, but it's not. It's certainly not like you know exploding rounds or or um, okay. even expanding rounds. Like the bullet seems to have, have come through clean. Okay, um, he is uh, he is hurting. Uh, he is in bad shape, but uh, it doesn't seem mortal. Um, it's kind of like upper chest, uh, so it, it seems to have missed his, his most important vital bits. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what you get from it. Low, again, typical of this planet, kind of like, a what you'd expect to see in a hunting situation. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, medical professionals have got it. So, uh, Eli's just coming to Atticus being like, which way did you go? Left or right? Uh, Atticus says, uh, uh, straight north. We need a perimeter. Close all the roads, shut down all the area around the Balansong property. This person's escaping on foot. Uh, Eli will yell that to the Imperial Guards people. Sure. Yep. Yeah, the Royal Guards picked that the up. Royal and guards, they, they yeah. all have beads to each other. Like, they can calm each other. So yeah. as soon as you yell back, they all vox it to everyone else. And ships, um, are, ships are still grounded, right? Uh, yes. So, okay. um, cause I'm thinking roads and on foot, so I want to make sure clear, no one can fly. Interstellar, like ships that can leave atmosphere yeah. are grounded. Um, there are like, except to say, yeah, Kiros flew yeah, here. There are planetary, like, int- oh, okay. so the then difference be being like, think of these as like shut down the airspace. Versus, yeah. So it's like yeah. airspeeder versus proper flight thing. Uh, also you suspect Kiros got a, uh, an exemption similar to what, uh, Valentine was talking about trying to get for you, uh, um, Atticus, which is like, as a Lord, he can fly places. Um, but, uh, again, just a little hop, like hops, basically the equivalent of a helicopter is what he's flying, not like a, a vehicle that could leave. It's the atmosphere issue, gotcha. which is like, you don't want anyone going off planet and Greybridge is small. We've established as a small, small planet. Um, and he got it from money. Uh, okay. So, um, but yes, you can lock down the airspace for sure. And again, the, the Royal Guard have, have the sort of Pelican style uh, ships, so they can also just shoot anything out of the sky that is buzzing around. Um, so they start, you can, like, if we we're from Toby's perspective, you see, like, you know, little folks in red just start to, like, mm-hmm. book it around and kind of um, create that perimeter. One of the j- jump ships kind of flies north of the woods, um, and you see people, like, roping down um, in. They're, like, these Royal Guard are, are you know, they're, they're local, but they're not, you know, poorly trained or anything. Um, so they are, they're off doing that. Um, and then Eli, um, I assume now that that's safe, you're going to try and find that gun. Yeah. Eli has no weapon. So there is 
a weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he, he would like it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay. I, so, I mean, Attic has crashed through the woods. So there, unless, there is a hole in the so tree unless line. So these woods <laughs> are like consistently like tr- trounced through. Oh, no. It's it's uh, like a very clear. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, yeah, you could you could drive a four by four. So through it Eli's now. gonna go for that. Sure. Okay. So Eli, you um you make your way through the the path of destruction uh, that Atticus kind of cannonballed through, uh, and you come to the spot that he kind of flagged mm-hmm. uh, for the rifle, um and picking it up, uh, it's an odd weapon. Uh, it's mm-hmm. clearly been heavily modified. Okay. Um, the what's strange about it is uh there's no stock. Um. It, okay. The, it seems to have been shortened uh, considerably. But it's like a sniper rifle. It's like it's it's a ranged rifle. Um, okay. There's no scope, and perhaps uh, most concerningly, uh, there is no uh, grip or trigger. There's instead a what? bundle of unplugged wires. That's good news. Meanwhile. Uh, Morgan, um, yeah. as all of this is going on, um, you've arrived, uh, at the maze, uh, and kind of like made your way inside, mm-hmm. uh, only to discover that Sakatar Voidstain is nowhere to be found. <sighs> Did it end, 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 no, no Voidstain. Shit. It only gets worse when upon exiting the maze, you discover that his carriage is gone as well. This episode of The Valentine Heresy features the voices of players Brian LaPlante, Tyler Hewitt, Laura Hamstra, and Del Borvik, alongside Game Master Tom McGee. This episode was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra, and The Valentine Heresy's artwork was created by Del Borvik at delborvik.com. That's D-E-L-B-O-R-O-V-I-C. Our theme song is The Hordes by Megan McDuffie, and our ad breaks use the tracks No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R. All of their music is available at freemusicarchive.org. For all things Dum Dums and Dice, including merchandise and how to join our Patreon, you can visit dumdumdice.com or find us on social media at dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Ave Imperator and death to all the heretics. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby, Richard Cranium, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Logan, Fire Unfriendly, Grandma Likes D&D, Alan, Stabby Stranger, Glitch Trick, Flynn1138, Alorain Okapi, Schrodinger's Pepper, Guy Edwards, Madre de Gatos, Lady Maiden, Nithrian, Garbo Ape, Locke, Sam Schaefer, Waffle Marine, Dagger Rain, Rob L, Dia de los Hoodless, Diovasis, Loki Burrito, Squishy Werewolf, Remy, Funky Head, Nomad, the Wise Paladin of the Badlands, Accent Therapeutic Services in Florence, Kentucky, Lale, Shulzari and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. 